Scream Queens Season 2, Episode 5. Thoughts this episode is called Chanel Pour Om Aside. And yeah, so spoilers for this episode as well as the ones leading up to it. Another episode I absolutely love. Before I dive into it, the top link in the description box will allow you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. Extremely important strike, and then there are a bunch of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, yeah, we learn at the start of the episode that the reason Chanel number one can hear the screams of number five from across the hospital is that she has she has developed a fine addiction to the sound of her screams of agony because she loves tormenting her so much and you know they get there and it's like Denise is dead and you know number five is like I'm still alive if you could like lift a finger maybe save my life and everyone's like w would you stop being so insensitive just yeah wow we can't bury Denise Hemphill she's a friend of ours we just need to find Aaron Burr. Exactly. And the cryo chamber, just wow. And there is indeed no bad press. And this is sadly very accurate to America. Like the the when something awful happens, it just, you know perhaps not always, but a number of the time it will actually lead to an increase in, you know, the, um, for example, I don't even remember, there's so many uh, mass shootings, I'm, I can't keep track of them, but after one of the mass shootings, you know, came out, oh well, part of the reason that the shooter, you know, like he used a, a bump stock to make an automatic weapon out of a semi-automatic weapon, and it didn't lead to a an increase in gun control laws, but it did lead to an increase in sales of bump stocks. So, yeah, this is very, very accurate. I really, really enjoyed the joke about the, the, the interpreter, let's see, Penelope Hotchkiss, as played by Mary Birdsong. Incredibly funny, and, you know, she goes through like four or five accents and number three just barely gets to say can we just appreciate that for all the accents she's done she has not yet done one that is offensive and then out comes the Indian accent she's like spoke too soon just yeah this is terrible no Oberlin has worked for 300 years and yeah so they decide the the um, they decide that they're going to get pledges even though they're no longer in a sorority because a lot of you know women from sororities guys from France they never actually stop thinking and behaving as if they are in one of the what are they called Greek societies you know and yeah, it becomes clear Kathy Munch did not hire Chamberlain Jackson, so that's yeah, and and you know and Munch is like, uh yeah, no duh. Of course he's now the top suspect. That's just <laughs> you know. And yeah, it turns out number five did actually survive, which I'm really glad about, and they get a lot of great new jokes about her new condition, and <laughs> apparently Tristan, Tristan St. Pierre was writing lesbian fan fiction, you know, slash fix about the, the, <laughs> the Chanel's. And I, I don't think I'm familiar with... Okay, so the actor is Pablo Castelblanco. I don't think I know him from anything else. I quite liked him here. Um, yeah, that was... <laughs> and, you know, it's you know, not, not only does he write these slash fakes completely, you know, without, like, unprompted, 
he's like sending them to the jail cells and you know he got the number from the lawyer hope you don't mind and just texting you know sending endless texts so just wow and you know the so so yeah he becomes one of the um what's the word one of the new chanels and you know number one is like name me one gay serial killer and number three just like immediately like she knows a little too much about serial killers there's I'm, I'm getting a distinct like Patrick Bateman vibe like did you know that you know I, f I forget which one but one of them had like a dog and it was a collie and it was named Lassie you know just like okay to maybe not you know she just immediately fires off okay here's some gay ones you know but yeah, Chanel number one is like no they're you know they can't be serial killers they're a peaceful musical people Oh my god, it's so awful and so funny. And the the foreign accent syndrome has gone viral, so they're they're all switching accents, you know, by like they'll they'll fire off one sentence or two and then switch accents. I I really respect like they all do quite good like some of them are a bit dodgy but they pointed out in dialogue so it seems like they were actually told you know do a bad accent which is also like that's not that's not exclusively like a horror thing but there's a lot of american you know a lot of american media where someone will have to do an accent and they're just not particularly good at it and and Hester wants to be a Chanel again. And she was a little upset when they started getting new Chanel's and she wasn't asked, you know. And um, I think it's number five says, you know, Hester has to sleep with number three in case she decides, yeah, in case she sleep murders. You know, like sleepwalking. Because, like, you know, some people sleepwalk, walk in their sleep. Well, if you're dealing with a serial killer, they might murder in their sleep. You know, it just... It goes without saying, honestly. I, I don't know why I'm even bothering explaining. This is something we all know intuitively. Um, this is tea. I ordered coffee. No, you didn't. You didn't order anything because this is a home, not a restaurant. And and number five is like. No, no, not not registering. Sorry. Um, I have no idea what you just said. And it's just uh, you know, I don't know what you're what you're talking. About. Of course, I it, do. You know, ah, crap! I forget the the first line, but it, you know, the response is like something. Of course, I don't, which was very funny. And yeah, um, you know, Chamberlain Jackson could be the killer because the father was African American. Let's see, and it's one of those things, you know. Yeah, one one African American, one white. Uh, you know, parent could lead to a, a black child, and yeah, they go over the. You know, you you sound you sounded like Keanu Reeves in Dracula, which. Ouch, I would. That's I. I wouldn't even see that. Say that to Keanu Reeves. And one of them's like, you sounded like Leo in Blood Diamond. I sound like Dick Van Dyke. And I think one of them was like Brad Pitt in, ah, crap, what's it called again? Uh, La Last Samurai? No, Seven Years in Tibet. I'm thinking of Tom Cruise for Last Samurai. Anyway, but yeah, very funny. And the the... Yeah, you know, Chamberlain talks to, to Zayde and explains, you know, he's he's a good guy. He likes, he just wants to make people happy, you know. And, like, it's a great little thing because, like, he picks up a cat and puts it inside the wagon. So we're thinking, oh, that's, that's serial killer behavior, you know. But then, like, a minute later, he takes it out and, like, you know, caressing it and... 
And I don't think Zayde saw him put the cat in. She just saw him, like, close the thing. He could have been putting anything in there. You know, it could have been completely innocuous. So maybe he is a good guy, you know, or maybe he's like, I mean, it's very showy to, like, I'm a good person. Look, I have a pet, and I'm petting them. You know, that is... So, yeah, as with every other character on this show, could go either way. Could be a serial killer, could be innocent and just, like, weird. Let's see. And I really love, you know, um, Dr. Brockholt has, you know, he's he has the solution. They're gonna, they're gonna binge watch these, you know, American, you know, American gigolo and, you know, and the Americans, and number three is like, that show is about Russians. That's like famously about Russians, you know, and he's like, just, it says Americans. I don't know, I mean, <sighs> okay, sounds, you sound, you sound ridiculous right now, number three, okay, you just, it has Americans right in the title. Am I supposed to look at even the slightest bit of, like, information about, like, who doesn't know that the Americans is about Russians? Just how do you how do you miss that? Just holy crap! And yeah, so Kathy fires or tries to fire Huffle, who admits, you know, yeah, she likes pethidine. Maybe she takes enough, you know, as much as you would, you know, give to a Clydesdale. But she's not addicted. Okay, so she's addicted, but, you know, just... And, yeah, she blackmails Kathy Munch, which, you know, we saw in an earlier episode that she overheard about the the Kuru. And the Chanel's all have a big slumber party, and... Oh, what was her name? D Daria is sent off to get the, the, um, what's it called, Ch a choker, which is also like, I mean, I, it doesn't, I don't need to understand why stuff like that is called, but choker, that always has sounded like really violent and and just anyway but but yeah you know and i like you know she, she you know tristan wants it more so she goes back and explains and you know also oh, it seemed like he wanted more and then i came up here <laughs> that last part we already knew but but thank you now we're up to date now we're completely you know and yeah tristan is dead it has been disemboweled so we get a nice practical effect we see you know they they open the the um morgue thingy majig and you know you see it'll actually like jiggle a little so just very very nicely done um and you know the the apparently the the uh what's it called you know the, some, someone points out i mean we we baited the green meanie, but we didn't actually set a trap. Like, just, yeah, really, really is very, yeah. Uh, and I, I quite appreciate, you know, at one point in the episode, Chanel number one says, you know, in order to survive a serial killer, you have to have a group of less interesting people around you for the killer to, to kill instead of you. I mean, that's, that's slasher... Slasher movie 101 right there. Just, yeah, so, so quite appreciate that. And we meet more Chanel's until there are 11 total. And, you know, the, the one, the 11 one has 11 fingers, so she has a sixth finger on one of her hands. And, you know, the killer comes uh, you know, and cuts off the finger and Thank you, and then stabs. Just wow, because like for for a second there, you think, oh, it's, you know, the the killer just really wanted to just yeah. And Hester is gone because of course she is, and she had like a big old smile on her face. She wasn't at all like surprised or upset at, at all, 
when Tristan was found murdered. Now, I haven't been able to find confirmation if... So, so Daria, the character, is played by Riley McKenna Weinstein. I haven't been able to find confirmation on if... Like, because I... Some people do have, like, uh, some facial paralysis. I'm not sure if the actress has that or they just are using, like, a prosthetic mask or, or something, but... Yeah, um, you know, certainly in season one, you know, deaf Taylor Swift actually is deaf, you know, um, Sam, I refuse to refer to her as channel number one does, actually is an androgynous, um, East Asian lesbian, so I don't know if, if, you know, I guess it's possible, but... No, no, like, articles popped up that confirmed that it was, that they got, I, I have to say, like, I mad respect for any, anyone with facial paralysis who, like, goes into acting, that, you know, yeah, um, I think that, you know, if that is what's happening, and, yeah, the episode ends with us realizing Cassidy is the baby from the, 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 uh, yeah, the 30 years prior thing, um, and maybe this explains the thing with, you know, how he's apparently cold to the touch, maybe he was lying to number three when he explained that, and this is, of course, this is the last minute thing that came up, why he couldn't, uh, you know, binge watch with the others. And his accent was back to normal, so maybe he was faking it. S yeah. Um, so, so yeah, you know, certainly it seems extremely likely that, yeah, he almost must be one of the killers, but there's probably more certainly would fit with season one, if there were, um, I think, right, I, I really appreciate the, the pun in the title, you know, that's, like, Chanel pour homme, you know, basically, like, if your French is even worse than mine, you know, basically means Chanel for him, you know, you know Chanel, I don't know. I don't really dabble in in makeup or uh, not not makeup. Uh fra fragrance based anything, but I'm pretty sure it's like thought of as primarily for for women or at least a lot of it is. So, you know, this is the Chanel that's for him and then om um, becomes om um, aside, like homicide, which very, very nicely done, and and this, of course, refers, you know, kind of spoils the fact that Chanel Pour Homme will end up dead by the end of the episode. Um, I think that is everything that I had to, I'm really gonna miss Niecy Nash as Denise Hemphill. I mean, they've brought other characters back, maybe there'll be, like, a, a Ouija board scene or something, um... Yeah, I'm really going to miss her, but I do also appreciate, you know, if everyone from the first season, every major character from the first season survives the entire second season, then after a while it's going to be like, okay, yeah, you're refusing to kill off any of the, you know. So, I think that is basically... Yeah, just, you know, another an amazing episode, and yeah, um, that's it for this one. Next episode I cover sometime next week, so yeah, keep screaming, queens.